Hello guys, today we'll have a Laravel Junior code review. So someone sent me the code via email and asked me to review it. I still sometimes do that if I have more free time and if I feel that the code base would be beneficial for someone else to see with some message or clear lessons and this is one of them. This is an example of, I would call, premature optimization and architectural decisions for a quite small project. And I see this as a pattern in junior developers code. They try to impress someone with their architectural decisions, creating folders and classes on top without really clear benefits or even clear functionality inside just the structure. And this is great if you're building a big project and architectural core is very important. But in this case, for a small project, this is an example of, in my opinion, overkill code. Again, as usual disclaimer, this is my personal opinion. You may disagree with something that you see in this video. And the goal is to not criticize that developer, but the goal is to impress my opinion for someone of you in the audience, maybe learn something together. So a small project you can see on the left side, only a few controllers. So there is no even specific functionality It's just for now managing users and roles. It's a simple admin panel. If you log in, it works like this. So admin management and user management. So I would classify it more like a boilerplate for other functionality to appear. And I will show you five things what I would do personally differently in this code. Let's start from a very simple one. You can see routes web and this line of code. With the comment, separate redirect controller because closures in routes don't get cached. But if we take a look inside of that controller, all that controller does is redirect without any logic or if statement, it's just a static redirect hard coded. So for that, what I would do instead is actually do route redirect from home without any controller to specific route or URL that is intended. For example, route admin home could be pasted here. So in this case, we don't even need a separate controller and we don't really care about caching. And in general, this is one example of premature optimization. Route caching is pretty small optimization in terms of how many milliseconds it could save on a request. And for small projects, route caching, it wouldn't be even on my list of questions whether to use it or not. I would use route caching for like at least 20 routes or something more significant. So that's my first advice here. Next advice or a weird thing I've noticed is a separate route file for admin, although there are no other files. So it would make sense to me if there was another kind of route group or something with require like user PHP or client PHP or something like that. But in this case, I think separating routes to a separate file, then other developers need to find it and click inside, I would consider that another overkill and premature optimization. Now in this file inside, I'm not sure why there are so many spaces between the lines. Let me remove them so we would be able to read it in one screen without scrolling. Yep, now you can see it all in once. And we have two route groups here, one for the auth behavior and one is for the behavior inside when the user is logged in. So my second piece of advice is why is that in a separate routes admin? For this amount of routes, I would probably do that in the routes web. And then also these are not admin routes. Perhaps these are admin routes for the inside functionality, but this is a login form. This is public for guests. So I'm pretty sure it should be outside in routes web, at least this part. And in general, another example of premature optimization, I personally take the routes outside of routes web into separate files only when I well have enough routes. And when I see clear separate groups by role or by other condition, the next kind of overkill to me is to have separate auth controller handling login and log out. If we go to the auth controller login form, and then handle login, which is doing almost the same thing as it would be done in default Laravel starter kit, like Breeze or Jetstream. On top of that, this developer uses guards for admins and I had a separate video about it, why I think it is an overkill as well. And if you haven't seen that video, I will link that in the description below. So maybe for that reason, I'm trying to understand. They wanted a separate custom auth controller with login 
and log out instead of installing Laravel Breeze. But on the surface, it sounds to me like reinventing the wheel without the need. After installing Laravel Breeze, you can totally customize the design. The controllers are also published, so you can customize all of those. So in most cases, I think you should not create your own auth logic without the need. The next thing I want to talk about is this. Auth controller extends app foundation controller. What is that? If we take a look at the folder app foundation here on the left, I see two files controller and form request. So I assume the logic was to have something global with some global behavior like base controller and base form request just called foundation. But let's see what's inside. What is the global behavior that should be used in all controllers? This is abstract class with toast property and only one method of flash toast. So it's basically for session flash messages, which would be used in more controllers. And two things I want to comment here. First, if we have auth controller extending that foundation controller, then probably I would expect somewhere that toast to be used, but no. So not every controller needs that base behavior. Or if we open another random controller like admin home controller, same thing, extending foundation controller, but no toast here. And finally, I did find that flash toast to be used in the store method of user controller and it was used in two more controllers but basically it is used in minority of controllers but all controllers still extend that foundation so my first point that it's not really a global controller it's behavior that should be only in some controllers so i wouldn't create some global base controller just for that and then another thing create a special class with property with a method that just calls one line of code maybe the idea was to add more code here in the future but for now for this simple small project I don't see anything wrong in replacing that flash toast in the controller with just calling session flash here. Of course, then it gets a bit longer because instead of compact, we need to add something like array of type and message separately, but I don't see much benefit in replacing this with this. Again, it's a personal preference and my personal opinion. To me, separating that into a separate global function is just not worth it. But let's take a look at another example where it is worth to have something global. And in this case, we have response service, which is used in pretty much every controller, including that auth controller we saw earlier. Response service is auto-completed, auto-hinted, and auto-resolved by Laravel and then many methods return this response service json for example which is something global and in this case i wouldn't call it premature optimization it's a personal preference where to store that it could be a response service or it could be in that foundation controller so personally this is where i would place that if you have global controller in here i would create something like function json function error instead of that response service so this is how response service look like with two methods json and errors in a way i could also classify that as overkill especially the method errors it doesn't add more than just response json with status code which could be also added here like this instead of setting status code with the method but at least it adds some behavior some custom behavior with for example structure so what is expected in that json and also filtering out the empty null values so the idea the intention here is pretty good structure for all the json responses in that project but it's not that convenient to use from controller for example let's close the sidebar so this response service json success true message and then data array with whatever keys and values you want so in this case my id php storm does show automatically the names of the variables but if you see that code somewhere else outside of id like on github for example or in other id that does not have those hints the first question to me would be response service json true what is true what does it mean what is its purpose so one way of dealing with that would be success equals true by default and then we don't need to pass that here anymore and then we specify just the message with the named parameter so message login successful and then data 
would be something like this. So manually specifying those attributes as it is allowed now in PHP 8. But then also that data that mixed to me personally is kind of ruining all the experience. Like the idea here is to have structure, but then mixed means that you can pass whatever you want. There's no extra validation here. There's no comment for any static analysis or whatever, what should be inside of that data. So without that properly implemented, I would probably still vote for just returning response JSON from every controller. And that would be even more readable. So new developers wouldn't even need to see what's inside of that response service. Similarly to the global controller, after all that response service doesn't contain enough logic for it to be worth to have that custom service for responses. So yeah, this is my kind of quick overview of that code from architectural perspective, not even digging deeper into those controllers, what's inside. I decided to stop here because this video is already quite long, but I hope you understand the main message. If you are a junior developer trying to create a relatively small project, don't create the structures, global structures for the future that may never come or you don't even know how that future would look like. My personal preference is to create as simple project as possible. You can call it MVP or version one with starter kits, default Laravel behavior. So don't really fight the framework with creating some kind of foundation, response services, custom login controllers. It's all inside of Laravel by default. And then if you bump into scenario that you need to customize that behavior, then do whatever you need, do the refactoring, create your own custom classes when it makes sense. And my understanding is that junior developers try to often impress someone with such structure like classes, like extra architectural layers. But in this case, personally, it didn't impress me much. Again, not to criticize that developer. It's a great attempt to do something useful and meaningful. And maybe I will change my opinion if I see that project growing with like tens of routes and controllers and then all of that comes together and makes sense with all those foundational architectural decisions. What do you think? Let's discuss in the comments below. What would you have done differently? Or maybe I'm wrong here somewhere. Let's discuss in the comments below. If you want your code to be reviewed, I don't promise that for everyone. I do that from time to time and usually within a month or so when I have free time. But you can try to convince me. Just email me povilas at laraveldaily.com with your code or link to GitHub and let's discuss. That's it for this time and see you guys in other videos.